I think everything's good. I've got my water. I've got my phone. Anyway, how's things, everybody? Hope you're. Uh, I hope you're not finding this PTE preparation stuff too amazing. I hope it's actually in some way benefiting your life. Teachers talk about this crazy thing called washback, which means that if you're preparing for a test, it actually improves your English. Hopefully it is improving your English, or maybe you don't really need to improve your English. Maybe you just need that 79. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? All right, let's get started with this then. Um, just let me double check. Cool. Hello, everybody. My name is Jay, and I'm one of the expert teachers at e2language.com. Com. What are we going to do in this live class? Well, we're going to look at PTE reading, multiple choice, multiple answers. This, I reckon, is this the hardest one? Yeah, it's probably one of, I reckon the two multiple choice question types in PTE reading are the most difficult. Multiple choice choose single answer has its own sort of issues. Um, it's often just tough. But this one, no doubt, is a tough one. So what we're going to do in this live class is this. I'm going to firstly just describe the task to you, task description. Then I'm going to talk to you about scoring because I want to clear up a lot of misinformation about how this thing is scored. Uh, I'm going to show you a method. And we're going to do some guided practice. Then we're going to do some practice. So in other words, what's going to happen is I'm going to step you through one of these questions, little bit by bit, so you know exactly how to do it. Then I'm going to go, hey, you try and do it for yourself. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, then finally, we'll recap. So just before I do this, um, just before I look at task description, I have to share the link. If you're on, if 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 you're in this live class and my screen format is off the screen please click on this link. I'm going to put it into the chat now. So, yes, uh, all panellists. No, that should go to everybody. How do I go to Yes. Please click that link there in order to watch it on YouTube and so you won't have any of those issues. By the way, if you're on YouTube, you're watching this, click like, click subscribe, leave a comment. That would be great. Task description. This is what you're going to see on test day. Holy moly. Guacamole. It's big. You can see that the text on the left-hand side of the screen is quite long. Whoa. All right, let's break it down. So first of all, you've got a, 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 a an instruction. It's a confusing instruction. Don't worry about it. I'll explain it in a second. You've got a question prompt. You've got a question prompt. I'm going to talk about that in a second too. You've got answer options. Here you've got uh, five. Sometimes you'll have six, seven I don't think I've ever seen more than seven. And you've got a big, whopping, great big thing of text. Now, of course, in PTE reading, you have to manage your own time. I think you get between, what is it, 32 and 41 minutes or something like that. It depends on the number of questions you get on test day. I suggest with multiple choice and multiple answers, spending about three minutes max on this one. So then you can move on to the next one. Uh, three minutes, three minutes. If you can do it quicker than that, then even better. The method I'm going to show you will help you to do that. On test day, you will get two or three of these, okay? You'll get two or three of these types of questions. Cool. Let's clear misinformation. Let's make this clear how you're scored, okay? Because it does have negative scoring. It's one of the two different tasks that has negative scoring in the PTE. So listening multiple choice, multiple answers, yes, has negative scoring. Reading multiple choice, multiple answers, yes, has negative scoring. In other words, you'll lose a point if you get it wrong. And there's another listening activity called highlight incorrect words, which also has negative scoring, but it's not so problematic. This one's a little bit tricky. Follow this. So let's say a question has four answer options, A, B, C, and D. So there are four possible answers. And they're the correct ones, okay? So obviously C and D are wrong. So if you select A and B, ta-da, you will score two points or 
If you select A, just A, only A, you'll score one point, 50 percent, and you will not lose any scores for not selecting B. You can just walk away with 50 percent if you want. If you select B, you will score one point, same thing, no points are lost for not selecting A. If you select A, B, and C, well, that's two minus one, so you'll get one point or 50 percent. And if you select A, B, C, and D, well, you get two minus two or zero points. Zero is the minimum score. You cannot go below zero. You can't get into negative one, negative two territory. That doesn't exist. Anyway, so what's the take home message then from the scoring? The take home message of this is this. If you are sure of one and unsure of another, then just choose one. Of course, if you're sure of both, or if you're pretty confident with both, two or three of the answers, then choose them all. But if you're sitting there and you're thinking, okay, I definitely know C is correct. I'm not quite sure about B. Well, you should play it safe. Instead of risking getting zero, you should walk away with 50%. So do that on test day. That'll help a little bit. Cool, let's think about the method and do some guided practice of this task. Step one, understand the question prompt. It will probably ask you to find specific details. For example, are the following statements accurate? Or what is true of computer technology? Or uh, which statements are true? It's gonna ask you something like this and you have to look for details. So for example, this question prompt says, which of the following statements about jellyfish can be supported? So here are the statements here, and you have to uh, uh, say, are they true or not, basically. I'm gonna, I'll talk you through that in a second. Step two, scan read the answer options with the question prompt in mind. For example, which of the following statements about jellyfish can be supported? Okay, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. So which of the following statements, here are the statements, okay? So which, are tr which about jellyfish can be supported? So they means jellyfish. So jellyfish have similar nutritional value to potato chips. Their jellyfish, their consistency doesn't appeal to Westerners palates. The new method of drying them, jellyfish, will increase their visual appeal. Their numbers, jellyfish numbers are increasing. They are considered a delicacy in, in, in Asia, rather, jellyfish, and the traditional production method is inefficient. Fine. So make sure you connect this question prompt to the answer options because then, whoop, no, that was going to flow on beautifully. Then you need to identify keywords in the answer option. But before we do that, let me go back and give you a tip. The answer options are not in the same order as the text. In other words, in other words, uh, let me give you an example. This one might be down here. This one might be up here. This might be found. This one might be found there, etc. So that's in no order. That's a little tip. So now we need to move on to step three and identify keywords in the answer option. So look at this one here. It says they have similar nutritional value to potato chips. Or the key word could be nutritional value. Okay, but let's go for potato chips there. Okay, we found a good key word or key words or phrase because then we need to go to step four, find corresponding keywords in the text. For example, ta-da, look at that. Now, it's not always going to be the same. This says potato chips. This says potato crisp, for example. It may use, it's going to use synonyms. It's not going to be the exact same phrase in the answer option and in the text. It's going to say it in a different way. In fact, it might not use any of the same words at all, but there will be a concept here and a concept here somewhere in the text. This really is the sum of the method. This is what you have to do. You look at that answer option, then you look at the text and you go, aha, there it is, the same, the corresponding information. Because then your job is to do this. Ask yourself, does the answer option 
say the same thing as the text? Does the answer option, does this um, jellyfish have similar the same thing as this, okay? If yes, you tick it. If no, you leave it. Cool, simple as that. So this question is critical. Does the answer option say the same thing as the text? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Let's, 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 let, whoopsie, I think I just gave you the answer. Let's do it. Yes or no? Does the answer option here say the same thing as the text? Um, let's just do it. You have 30 seconds to read these two little bits. All right, there's 30 seconds. Let me check that chat. See how, da, ah, very good, very good. Good, 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 good. Uh, yeah, right. Whoop, somebody's already got both answers. We're going to do it step by step. Cool. So the answer to this one is no, they do not say the same thing. In fact, this paragraph here says nothing about nutritional value. It says that they, that, that, that this jellyfish could have a similar consistency and crunchiness, but nothing about nutritional value. So we skip it. We move on. Remember, this is it. Identify keywords in the answer option, find corresponding keywords in the text, and ask yourself, does the answer option say the same thing as the text? Ready? We're now on to B. You have 30 seconds to see if B says the same thing as the text. Sorry, there's a little bit more information, which is probably, you should start reading from here. That's also important. Does this say the same thing? 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 Let's have a look at the chat here. Well, it depends if you understand what the meaning of palate is, which is um, a taste. Um, yeah, 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 palate is a taste. Does it appeal to the palate? Does it appeal to Westerners' tastes? So let's have a look at this. It says, for thousands of years, jellyfish has been a highly desirable food in Asia, but it has never really taken off in the West. Maybe it has something to do with the gristly texture jellyfish acquires after being subjected to the traditional processing procedure in Asia. A gastrophysicist has developed a new method for drying jellyfish where it loses all the gristly consistency and becomes paper thin and crunchy, a bit like a potato crisp. Not only can the method make jellyfish more attractive to Westerners, so their consistency doesn't appeal to Westerners' palates, I would go, yes, I would go, yes. I would tick this one because, whoops, I was supposed to be showing you the screen there. Sorry. Um, let me show you the screen now. I would say, yes, I would tick this one because jellyfish traditionally or in the past until this uh, new method has been developed, their consistency doesn't appeal to Westerners' palates. The consistency doesn't appeal to Westerners' palates. You know, this is this is where reading gets a bit tough because it's not it's not mathematical. It's not one to one. It's not. Sometimes it's a little bit unclear. Sometimes you need to make little jumps of meaning in order to get it. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's clear as day, and you go, 
that this is definitely not that, or this says the same thing as this. Sometimes, and this is what PT reading is all about, it's about subtlety. It's about nuance of, of, of meaning. So, I mean, I made this question, so uh, I think it's a good one, but we can argue about that later on. Let's keep going. Identify keywords in the answer option. Find corresponding keywords in the text. Ask yourself, does the answer option say the same thing as the text? Let's do C here. I want you to focus on that word visual in C because it seems to be a pretty meaningful word. Does C say the same thing as the text? Let's have a look at this chat. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, interesting. All right, all right. I've got a few on my side and most, most of you on the other side. All right, let me try and explain this one then. Let me try and explain this one. Be careful, be careful with little words like this, visual appeal. Okay, this says, actually, let's read C first. It says, the new dry fit will increase their visual appeal how they look, how they look, their visual appeal. This says a gastrophysicist has developed a new method for drying jellyfish where it loses all the gristly consistency and becomes paper thin and crunchy, a bit like a potato crisp. Does that, does that mean it increases its ap visual appeal? Well, if it loses all the gristly consistency, that's a positive thing, that, that's good, but that's got nothing to do with the visual aspect of it becomes paper thin and crunchy. Then it's got this bit. Not only can the method make jellyfish more attractive to Westerners. Oh, actually, maybe you're right. Maybe this question's not quite right. This is the problem. Actually, this raises a really interesting point. Writing good PT academic materials, by the way, is not easy because stuff like this happens all the time where I'm sitting in my office and I think, what a great question that is. Got it. This will this will teach them all everything. And then I lay it out to you and you go, doesn't quite make sense. So let that be a little lesson. Let's let's skip C because it's I would say no. I'm gonna I'll, I would say no, but it's probably not the best question because well, it's definitely not contradictory. It's not contradictory. So anyway, don't worry about C. Let's do Let's do D, D, ready? So identify keywords in the answer option, find corresponding keywords in the text and ask yourself, does that answer option say the same thing as the text? Hopefully this one's clear. Let me move this thing here. Do these two say the same thing? This, yeah, this one's clear. This one's good. Let's have a look. Oh, interesting. All right, all right, all right. I'm confident with this one. <laughs> Sorry about the other one. Here we go. So jellyfish numbers are increasing. This says there are far too many jellyfish in and we have an ever-increasing number of mouths to feed on Earth. This is talking about humans, by the way. So really, this is irrelevant. This is irrelevant. So what we're doing is we're saying, okay, does this say the same thing as this sentence here? Jellyfish numbers are increasing versus there are far too many jellyfish in the sea. The answer to that one is no, because it says nothing about them increasing. All it says is there's heaps of jellyfish in the ocean. Does it say anything about whether their numbers are increasing or decreasing? No. 
And we have to use information only from the text there. We can't use our own background knowledge or we can't assume anything. We just need to go by what's on the page in front of us, okay? So even if you're a, a, a marine biologist studying jellyfish and you know that they're increasing, don't use your background knowledge. Use the text that's in front of you. This one is a no. And this second part was what made it confusing. Right, identify keywords in the answer option, find corresponding keywords in the text, ask yourself, does the answer option say the same thing as the text? Think of synonyms here. Yes or no, do these say the same thing? All right, that one's good. 99% of people are saying yes, and I would agree with you. I would agree. What's the synonym? Can anybody see the synonym for, um, well, here we've got delicacy. What's what's the synonym here? It's, it's actually three words, three words. There's a three-word synonym. It's highly desirable food, delicacy. There you go. There's a synonym. So they are jellyfish are considered a delicacy in Asia. Jellyfish has been a highly desirable food in Asia. The verb tense is a bit odd, but yes, they effectively say the same thing. So I'm going to tick that one. So we've got B and E. Cool. Last one. Identify keywords in the answer option. Find the corresponding keywords in the text. Ask yourself, does the answer option say the same thing as the text? There's a little bit more information which might be relevant. It says up here about the uh, traditional processing procedure in Asia. That's where that word comes from. Does this say the same thing? Whoops, I've given you the answer anyway. Cool, that was helpful. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, uh, I didn't mean to give you the answer. That's cool. Let's have a look. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. So did I give you the answer? What's going on? I'm losing my mind here, everybody. Losing my mind, am I? All right, I did give you the answer by accident. So no, I didn't give you the answer. I am losing my mind. Here we go. The answer is yes. Anyway, let's, let's think about why it's yes. Let's think about why it's yes. So the traditional production method is inefficient. So it's talking about this traditional processing procedure in Asia, okay? And then it says not only can the, it's talking about a new method here, the new method make jellyfish more attractive to Westerners, the new method can also make the Asiatic processing procedure significantly faster, suggesting that it's currently slow, increasing the efficiency of the Asian processing plants. This is no easy procedure. It takes between 30 and 40 days for the jellyfish of the traditional method. So the answer there is reading between the lines. Again, it's one of those tricky ones where it's it's not directly saying it. It's not directly contradicting, tr contradicting it. It's sort of you're pulling little bits of information from here and this sentence and this sentence and you're putting it together and you're sort of inferring, you're inferring that the new method is fast, makes it more efficient, therefore the old method must be slow. Is there an assumption in there? Not really, because all the information is there in the text if you put it together. Cool. So ultimately what we're left with, apart from the crazy C question, we've got B, E, and F. Uh, just put a smiley face into the chat if you got that, please. I just want to know who got B, E, and F. Good. Nice, nice, nice. Quite a few of you. If you're on YouTube, you're watching this, please click like. Tell me what score you got into the comments below and subscribe and subscribe. So somebody's asked me, what's the synonym for the last answer? In fact, there is no synonym for the last answer. It's 
It's more about putting the pieces of the puzzle together. Sometimes you have just, you find the synonym, like this one with delicacy and, and highly desirable food, fine. But for F, no, it's about, it's about reading this part here, which I didn't give you. It's about reading this part here and reading this part here and sort of pushing that information together, putting all of those clues together. So there's different ways to do this, sometimes using synonyms, sometimes using sort of main ideas. All right. Your turn, a bit of independent practice. We've looked at that method. We know what to do. Hopefully these questions are good. Hopefully they're good. Let me just move this thing to here. All right, I'm gonna give you three minutes starting now. That's two minutes, you have one minute left. <clears throat> Ten seconds left. All right, let's have a look at how you went. Okay, D and E, C and E, C and E, C and E, B and D, A C E, C E, B and C, B C E, A B. Okay, let's 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 see. Hopefully, uh, hopefully my question answers plural more than one multiple choice multiple answers so english speakers are affected by the condition exclusively exclusively the problem is particularly pervasive in the english speaking countries of the united states and new zealand but also in iceland and even greece do these two say the same thing yes or no no no, no, no. If it said almost exclusively, no, it just says, this basically says 100% of people suffering from this condition speak English. No. Fine. That was pretty easy. Next one. 
This one, um, I'm, <laughs> I'll probably get into an argument with this one. This is probably not a great one. It says, more women than men suffer from being overfat. Well, it sort of says, in developed countries, 90% of adult males are overfat. And it says, in the top overfat countries, 80% of women fall into this category. I'm going to just push through this one because it's not a great question, I just realized, because... Well, let me explain why it's not a great little question. So this one's talking about in developed countries, 90% of men are over fat. Then it says in the top over fat countries, and we don't know what those are, 80% of women fall into this gap. Um, don't worry about B. Don't worry about B. Let's just move on to C. Being over fat is most common in developed countries. Yes or no? about C. Yes. Let's have a look. Cool. Looking good, looking good, looking good. I agree with you. I agree with you. There we go. C. Being over fat is most common in developed countries because it has even more prevalent. Uh, there's a synonym, most common, even more prevalent in developed countries. And here it says some more information to confirm that this is right. This trend may be bad news for developing countries as well, since they have followed the trend. They're following the trend, therefore they're not the leaders, therefore C is yes. Cool. What about D? Icelandic and Greek people are healthier than Americans and New Zealanders. Yes or no? I don't want you to assume anything. Don't assume anything here. Yeah, good. Jatinda's got it right. Thought to be, thought to be. There's a bit of, well, it's not clear, is it? it this says, this is very definite. This is, this D is very, excuse me, very definite. Icelandic and Greek people are healthier than Americans and New Zealanders. Be careful with statements that are, that are absolute like this, that are certain. Because then here it says um, the problem is particularly pervasive in the United States and New Zealand, but also in Iceland and even Greece where people are generally thought to be healthy. There's no comparison happening between the two. This is a no. Fine. What about E? People in developing countries are at risk from this pandemic. Yes or no? Interesting, interesting question, this one, actually. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jatinda's got it again. Bad news for at risk. I reckon that's the giveaway, the giveaway phrase there. Okay, so people are at risk. This trend may be bad news for developing countries as well, since they have followed the trend of developed nations in the growing overfat pandemic. In other words, people in developing countries are at risk from this pandemic. So, yes, I'm going to choose E. Cool. Here we go. Over fat is another term for obese. Don't assume anything. Does F say the same thing as that first sentence? No. Good. Cool. I agree. No, I wouldn't choose that one. I wouldn't choose that one. So I think before I just show you all the answers there, this question type becomes a hell of a lot easier and simpler when you break it down. When you're just looking at that big block of text and you're looking at seven answer options and the top clock ticking down. I just want to go home and watch Netflix. No, what you need to do is break this down. Look at it part by part. Identify that key, those keywords and the answer options. 
find the corresponding statement in the text, confirm or disconfirm. Does it say the same thing? Yes, tick. Does it say something different? So you're not reading the whole block of text. You're not, you're not, you're not, you know, you're not looking at F. Whoops, what's going on? You're not looking at F. Let's do this again. You're not looking at F and then reading all of this. No, you're not doing that. What you're doing is you're reading F and then you're finding the particular part of the text and you're reading this sentence here only and then going and saying yes or no. That makes it so much easier. By the way, the answers were, what's going on with my computer? Whoops, there it died. The answers were C and E. C and E, but also B was a doozy. If you had C and E, if you had C and E put in it, even if you had another one, if you had C and E, smiley face into the chat, please. Do, 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 do. Nice, nice. Somebody's asked, can I just choose C or can I just choose E? Yes, and you could have walked away with 50%. It's like who wants to be a millionaire? Now you can take the million dollars or you can walk away with $500,000. It's not a bad thing to do sometimes to go, you know what? I'm a bit unsure. I'll just take half a million dollars. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. Cool. All right. Um, good. Recap. So here's the method, right? So on test day, you sit down, you're up to multiple choice, multiple answers. You understand the question prompt. It's going to ask you something about looking for confirming details, whether they're true or not, or are the statements accurate, or what is true of the text, something like that. Then you need to make the connection. You quickly read the answer options with the question prompt in mind. For example, we saw how it used pronouns like they, jellyfish, them, jellyfish, their, jellyfish. Make that connection between the question prompt and those answer options because then you move on to the important part of the method. This is really critical here. Three, four, and five. Sorry, my star drawing abilities faded since high school. Identify keywords in the answer option, right? You do that. Then you find the corresponding keywords in the text and you ask yourself, same or different? Yes or no? If yes, you tick. If no, you leave it behind. And that, my friends, is the end of that. I should just say, while I'm here, let me do a little marketing spin for you. If you need help with your PT, please check out this website, e2language.com. We have methods. We have practice materials. We have tutorials. We have feedback. We have the live class every night of the week. If you do need help, check it out. By the way, if you're on YouTube, click like, leave a comment, and subscribe. But right now, I'll go to Q&A and answer any pressing questions you have. Well, some Ratif has got a good question. Jay, do we have enough time to read the whole text? Yes. In the three minutes, hang on, let me start again. Yes, you have enough time to quickly skim read, scan read the 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 whole block of text so you know what it's about. You should do that actually. You should spend 20 seconds just quickly reading the thing about the jellyfish. Do, 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 do. Of course, you don't have to memorize any of it because then you go to step three, four, and five where you start to do the confirm, disconfirm thing. So you quickly skim through it, then you go back and do the steps three, four, and five. Good question. Now with multiple choice single answer, it's different. You really have to deep read the text because it's going to ask you for one thing and sometimes it'll ask for a main or an appeal, something like that, and it requires you to read it a lot more deeply, I think, anyway. Um, cool, good question. Um, da, 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 um, okay, well, Zishan, there's, I don't know how these conspiracy theories and this bad advice gets out, but some, there's some fool, I'm sorry to say that, but some fool has said on the internet somewhere that you should skip multiple choice, multiple answers because it because don't waste time on it. Oh my God. 
don't skip it. <laughs> Even like that's just the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Even if you were to skip it, at least move on. Don't just skip the whole thing. But don't skip it at all. Practice. Use the method. Get them right. Get them right. You can do it. You can do it. So that idea about skipping multiple choice, multiple answers, whoever started that rumor, uh -uh, totally, totally disagree. Um, Shri, any ideas of the weightage for multiple choice, multiple answers or any of the reading? The answer to that is no. The PTE keep their algorithm pretty secret. They don't tell you which task is worth more than others, okay? So unfortunately, we don't know that. And that's all the more reason to complete every task and not skip any, because really we don't know how much multiple choice, multiple answers is worth, do we? Um, Lakshmi Narayan wants to know about the platinum package on e2language.com and what is the pre-test strategy session? So the pre-test strategy session, if you do purchase the platinum package, is it's an opportunity for you and me to sit down before you take your test maybe the day before, maybe two days before, and talk about whether you understand the methods, um, if you have any last questions, and also for me to just, or one of the teachers here, just to make sure you feel okay, whether you're confident, whether you need any sort of um, anxiety coping mechanisms or anything like that. So that's part of the top package there. Um, good. Cool. Thanks, Hattie Ali. Appreciate it. Um, okay. Param Via asks, is it a maximum of three minutes for multiple choice, multiple answers ready? No, you can spend 30 minutes on it if you like, but that means you cannot answer any of the other following questions. Again, you have to manage your own time. So I recommend or suggest three minutes max. Two and a half minutes for a single answer, about two minutes for a real order paragraph. Again, if you're a paid E2 language member, you can come to the live classes where we where we do this under time conditions, which happen, the reading happens every Wednesday night, I believe. Okay, Moses is a good question. Can we assume that there will be three answers all the time or, or any number of answers? No, you can't assume that there will be, there will always be more than one. So there'll be always at least two, possibly three. Very rarely four. I reckon that it's, well, when I did my PT, I did the PT. I got 90 in reading. In fact, I got 90 in all of the skills. Whoopie doo, I'm an English teacher. But when I did my PT reading, um, I had two or three of these questions, as you will. Three of them, two answer options. Two were correct, not three. Just keep that in mind. That's not a hard and fast rule, but... There's always going to be two, at least two, maybe three. At least two, maybe three. Good question. Natalia, how long does it take to normally prepare for the PTE test? It completely depends on where your current level of English is. So if you're pretty basic, it's going to take you a long time. And it also depends on what score you're aiming for, 65 or 79 are the two usual scores. So if you're a beginner, you're trying to get a 79, whoa, that's gonna take some time. If you've taken this thing before, here's what I suggest you do, because otherwise it's just theory. Pearson, the PTE are very kind. They have offered out ptepractice.com, which is the official mock test. And it actually uses the same computer algorithm as the real PTE. So if you don't know where you stand, like let's say you need a 79, but you've never taken the test before and you've never taken IELTS, take the mock test. It's $30, I think, and it gives you a really accurate assessment. Just make sure you use a good microphone, that's all. Then when you get your results, either A, you're going to be ready to take the real test and you'll be very happy with your mock test results. You think, beautiful, I'm 10 points above what I need, I'll go and take it. Or you're going to get your results and you're going to think, holy moly, I need some help. If that happens, check out our website. We can help you. Uh, cool, 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 cool. Didn't get that one. Should we use the logical meaning of the options in consider? Well, 
Uh, Mubul, okay. As I, uh, Mubul's got a question about whether we can just use synonyms from the answer options to find the corresponding bit of information in the text. As I said before, sometimes you can. For example, what was the delicacy and what was the synonym? Something about nice food or I can't remember. Sometimes, yes, you can use the synonyms to, to find the corresponding part of the text. Sometimes, no. Sometimes you have to put the puzzle together because there might be three little sections that you have to read. It's it, Again, it's practice. It's tricky. Uh, uh, cool. Uh, okay, Rummies. Hello, Jay. I want to. I want. I need PT preparation from E2 language in the gold method. In the gold package, will the teacher consult me? The answer is yes. In different ways. First of all, you will get with the gold package. You get three one-on-one -on -one tutorials like this. Let me tell you how this works. E2 Language is really, really clever. What we've done is we've created a self-study course where, first of all, you learn the overview of the, of the task. We teach you about the task, what it is, how many you'll get, what it looks like, what the word count is, all that information. So you know what you have to do. Then you learn the methods. So you learn how to do it. For example, reorder paragraph, there's a method. The essay, describe image, retail lecture, there's methods for each of these tasks. Then what you do is you submit feedback, which means you'll submit an essay or you'll record yourself describing the image and you'll receive expert feedback from the teacher, including a score and comments about how to improve. Now, the best thing that you can possibly do to improve your score is to have a one-on-one -on -one consultation, which comes next. So then you will, after you, you already know what to do, you understand the methods, everything, then you meet the teacher online like this, on Zoom, which is like Skype, and you have a one-on-one -on -one consultation, and you do describe image or read aloud or retail lecture, or you, the teacher looks at your essay with you or summarized written text or summarized spoken text and gives you personalized feedback, basically tells you what you're doing right, but more importantly, what you're doing wrong. This is the fastest way to improve that I can think of. I can't think of any other way to improve as quickly as that. Um, cool. Do, 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 do. I've already, already answered that one. I've answered that one. Um, for any advice on effective time management? That's a good question. The answer is, I mean, I don't want to sound patronizing or anything like that, but improving time management means improving your fundamental skills, improving your vocabulary knowledge, improving your grammar usage so you can read more quickly. Apart from that, there's no, I mean, the methods help you, like what I showed you today, right? Instead of looking at the entire block of text, break it down, do it part by part. And, and then the other thing then, I guess, is practice. So method, fundamental skills, methods, practice. That's how you improve your efficiency. Um, okay. Okay. Okay, Daryl's, yeah, well, a lot of people ask this question. It's a good question and it's about anxiety on test day. And Trust me, I know what that feels like. I've <laughs> I've done these things before, and I know the how important this test is. You've got a lot riding on it. It's expensive. Not just that; it's a strange experience. You're sitting in a room with 20 other people. A few things. First of all, there's a few practical things to consider when it comes to overcoming anxiety. You know what? You can't overcome anxiety. There's no overcoming of anxiety. Forget trying to get rid of your anxiety. I think this is the most crazy thing with, you can't get rid of it. You can minimize it by not really paying attention to it. Here's my advice. A few practical things. First of all, make sure you get a good night's sleep. Go to bed early. Don't drink alcohol the night before your exam. Alcohol makes anxieties go sky high. Have a good breakfast. Maybe avoid drinking coffee if it makes you anxious. 
practical things like that, food, sleep, okay? Second thing is, okay, accept the fact that you're going to be nervous. Accept it. Accept it. Because I think what happens to our minds when we don't accept it and we try and go, I don't want to be anxious. I don't want to be anxious. Oh, my God, I'm so anxious. Oh, my God, I'm getting more anxious. Just accept it. Go, you know what? I'm feeling pretty anxious. That's okay. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the anxiety. So when I'm doing that reading, instead of focusing on, you know, my heart's beating or whatever it is, I'm going to focus on the text and I'm going to try and understand the text and read it. And when I'm doing the listening, I'm going to really listen. And when I'm writing, I'm really going to write and think about what I'm writing. Because what happens is when you start to focus on something else instead of your anxiety, well, it kind of goes away anyway. So the key concept here is focus on meaning, focus on meaning, focus on understanding, focus on expressing yourself, then hopefully your anxiety will not be um, such a bad thing. But, yeah, it sucks. It totally sucks. I agree. I agree. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, a few questions. One of the questions here is about speaking and what happens in the PT is, yes, you will have other people in the exam centre doing the speaking at the same time. This is pretty normal. Think about when you're on a train and you're talking to your friend. Is everybody else silent? No. No. Everybody else is speaking as well. And what, again, concentrate. It's about concentrating. It's about concentrating on what your friend's saying, not listening to what other people are saying, and concentrating on what you're saying. It relates back to the anxiety thing. But again, what I found with the PT was it was really hard to concentrate. I think when you're speaking to a person, you know, you see their face, they're responding to you, they smile, they whatever. The PT, you're talking to a computer screen and it, it's hard to concentrate. You have to keep reminding yourself to concentrate, concentrate, concentrate focus, focus on task, on task, that it really, and again, this comes back to why practice is so important. Practice is really important for that. Cool. Shri, check out the website. Uh, what's the time? Nearly five o'clock. I better go soon. I better go. Uh-oh, I've got 104 new questions there. Please, if you have any questions at all, send them to hello at e2language.com. We'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, do check out the website. Make yourself a free account. If you need help, do upgrade. If you're watching this on YouTube, click like, click subscribe, and leave a lovely comment. Thank you very much for coming along. I'm going to go home. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to eat some good food, and then I'm going to relax. I hope you have a nice rest of your Saturday.